Jeremiah 29:11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Facing difficult situations today can take comfort in this verse, knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering, but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives, and regardless of our current situation, He can work through it to prosper us and give us a hope. He is the answer. Psalms 17, 6 to 8. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Some things only God can do. That is why we need to come to Him. When we do, we need to put our faith in His ability to answer our prayer. God is the only one who can ultimately save us, sanctify us, and deliver us from evil. When we let God do His work, things happen rather perfectly. But when we presumptuously take over his territory, things tend to crumble all so quickly. Today, like David, may we pray to God because we know he will answer. If we do, he will show us his unfailing love in wonderful ways. Let's bring our needs and all our cares. His grace is amazing. His love never ends and His power is sufficient. Let's visualize God as He listens to our prayers. See His attentive face as we share with Him. Sense His deep care and concern. Feel deep in our hearts that He is listening and will answer us. Let's meditate on His unfitting love for us. Affirm that God hears our prayer. Enlighten my heart. It says in Ephesians 1, 18-19, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people, and His incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength. I love words put together, on a page with hidden meaning, a puzzle waiting to be solved. My grandmother has always loved to read her Bible. Growing up, she would read it before she goes to bed. I listened to her mumbles and whispered prayers. As a child, God's words through my grandmother had enlightened and taught me about His power He has for me to live by. I have a choice with my heart. We don't want a hard heart. We want a heart that is enlightened by the Holy Spirit. One that is led day by day, living by faith, trusting in His love and power. Imagine what it feels like to be in a hopeless situation. We are trapped. We don't know what to do when we feel so helpless. Let the feeling affect our body. Feel the tension and despair. But then we cry out to God and He hears us. Sense the joy as we realize that God is there. That He is giving us hope. Hope that comes from the knowledge that He loves us. And that He has mighty unlimited power to help us. Let our hearts sense the reality of His presence. Feel the relief. Hope in the joys we feel His love enlighten our hearts. Help me when I'm sleeping. It says in Psalms 94 and 18 to 19, 
When I said my food is sleeping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. Your consolation brought me joy. When we fear, God is there to comfort us. He's there. His love leading Him directly to our pain. He reaches and touches our heart. God's unfailing love has caught us and lifted us to safe ground. Praise God and affirm when we fear, God is there to comfort us. Father, we are sleeping. Please come to our aid. Catch us. Hold us. Help us find better footing. We need your consolation. We need your never-failing love. We need your help. Guide us. Comfort us. Rescue us in the name of Jesus. Grace and Blessings It says in John 1, 16-17 Out of His fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Sometimes, all we see is everyday struggles of life. It is like that with God's grace. We can get so bogged down with life that we don't see all the grace that God has brought into our life. He introduces this manifest of grace in contrast to the law that was given through Moses. Moses gave us the law, but Jesus gave us God's grace. This grace was manifested in God's unfailing love and faithfulness toward us through the death and resurrection of Christ. What about going to the beach and enjoy its beauty and serenity? Or look at the sky, how beautiful and peaceful it is. Feels like God is reaching out His hands to cover us from fears and distress. Today, let's take the time to be conscious of God's many blessings. Rejoice in His wonderful grace and faithfulness. Let's ask God to forgive us for taking His love and faithfulness for granted. Let's thank Him for His infinite love and grace towards us. Let's thank Him for all His blessings. As we enter into His court, we see His grace everywhere. Let's bow in worship and thank Him for all He has for us. Our spiritual gifts. In Romans 12, 6 to 8, it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. God has given us a certain passions and abilities to use for His glory. God has given every believer at least one spiritual gift for doing His will in this world. And that His Holy Spirit nudges us to use it through His strong desire to serve Him in a way that seems to make sense for us. Paul gives examples like serving, teaching, giving, and leadership. So if different people all see a need, like helping the homeless in the community, he could motivate one to serve food at a shelter, another to teach at a job read in his class, another to give of their income to provide for the needed shelter, and yet another to lead a church to get involved. Each person reacted to the same problem through the way God motivated them, using the gifts He blessed them with. Today, ask God to reveal us the different ways we could serve Him. He has given us spiritual gifts and will show us when and where to use them. Let's thank God that He has given us spiritual gifts. Let's ask Him for help so that we could learn everything we can about them and help us use them for His glory. 
we seek to use the spiritual gifts God has given us. Let's try to discern what our spiritual gifts are. If you are an accountant, work diligently. If you fix cars, ask your customers for a reasonable price. If you're a seller, do not overcharge. As God reveals to us our spiritual gifts, ask Him to help us use it for His glory. Don't condemn yourself. In John 8, 10 to 11, Jesus strained up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. When Jesus was listening to the man who wanted to stone a woman to death, whom they said committed adultery, Jesus instructed them, the one without a sin should throw the first stone. One by one, each man left until only the woman and Jesus remained. Jesus asked, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? The woman stood there, no doubt, astonished, and said, No, Lord. Then Jesus said those words of extreme freedom, Neither do I. Paul brings the point home after explaining our human condition of doing things that we don't want to and not doing those that we should. It is not Jesus who is condemning us. It is our inner voice that has picked up the stone. It is the internal dialogue of guilt, shame, remorse, worthlessness that is pelting us. Leaving us bloody and bitten, those are the attitude inside our heart that constantly condemning us. They're full of shame, guilt, and legalism tying us up and keeping us from experiencing the freedom that was given to us. Let's renounce these inner condemnations and celebrate our forgiveness. Let us live in the reality of His love. Let the thought of Jesus setting us free from this nagging guilt permeate our being. Feel and release as we realize that we are loved, forgiven, and free. Look up to heaven and affirm, I am not condemned by God. Endurance and Hope In Romans 5, 3, to fight. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God's Word gave us endurance and hope. Let's meditate on God's holy word. Sense Him speaking to our heart and giving us wisdom and understanding. Feel the peace that comes to our heart as we reflect what we have remembered and see yourself being filled with endurance and hope. Take a deep breath and let endurance and hope fill our mind with peace. Sin of worry. In 1 Peter 5, 6 to 8, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. In other words, our worry leads us astray and allows Satan a foothold into our lives. Since sin is at its core, missing the mark that God has set for us, then worry is not living up to God's standard. Jesus made the mark clear here, 
and our sin is failing to believe that God will care for us, even though He promised to do so, of course we all fall short of this mark and allow ourselves to worry. Let's find comfort and peace through a scripture that promises us hope and a future. Fear, worry, and anxiety are all weapons of Satan to keep us from experiencing the full life that God has for us. These emotions can overwhelm us and keep us paralyzed. Learn how to live free from worry and anxiety by meditating on the Word and casting our cares upon Jesus. May we never doubt the integrity and truth of God's Word, for what He has promised, He will fulfill. May we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt us at the proper time. And may we cast all our anxiety on Him, because He cares for each one of His blood-bought children. Let's start today and take small steps toward living fully free from anxieties. His perfect peace. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. God expects us to consider what we think and judge it according to His word. Trouble comes into our life and we begin to fear. When it does, we have a choice to make. Do not panic. Do not remain in fear. Let's obey God's passage and trust in Him. Let's fix our thoughts for His perfect peace. Not just any peace, His perfect peace. It is the same way with anger, jealousy, doubt, and hundreds of thoughts that come into our life every day. Today, when negative thoughts come to our mind, begin a new habit. Trade them in for peace. By giving the thoughts to God and then choose to trust in Him by fixing our thoughts on His love for us. Let's trade our negative thinking for His perfect peace. His peace will sustain. His peace will return us to joy in a thankful heart. Let's pray that the thoughts of our heart and the meditation of our mind be centered on Him moment by moment, so that the righteousness and peace of Christ will kiss our life as we walk in spirit and truth, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wait on God. In Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Life can get hard. Feelings from inside, forces from outside. It can become overwhelming. We stumble and fall because we rely on our own inner strength and human resources, which are not sufficient shield in the storms of life. Only power from above is sufficient to sustain us. Only His protective hand can shelter us from the storms of life and not our own limited human abilities. These words of comfort were given to Israel after Isaiah repeated warning of approaching punishment. If they did not repent of their evil ways, nevertheless, the Lord is a God of comfort and grace. He never goes back on His word, nor does He grow weary. And in His loving kindness, He gives grace to the humble and renews the strength of those that wait upon Him by faith. Whether the promises of God for Israel are given to the church, God's word is true. His judgments are just, and His promises are yes and amen. For those that believe His word, wait on Him, abide in Him, and He in us. I am so much blessed to have a good, good Father that I can fully trust He is worthy to be praised.